I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a practice test question on application of second derivative. The question here is, a particle moves in a straight line with position function s of t equals to 2t cube minus 12t square plus 18t minus 3 where t is greater than or equal to 0. So you have to do the following things. First, graph the position velocity and acceleration functions. When is the particle at rest? When is particle moving in positive direction? When is speed of the particle increasing? What is the distance traveled in first six seconds? You can always pause the video, answer the questions, and then look into my suggestions. So in such questions, let's begin with finding the derivative of the function. We are given s of t as equals to 2t cube minus 12t square plus 18t minus 3, where t is greater than or equal to 0. Velocity will be derivative of uh, the position vector. So the derivative is 6t square minus 24t plus 18, right? You could always uh, factor this, taking 16, 6 common first, group factoring, we get t square minus 6 times 4, that is 4t, and plus 3. This is a quadratic equation which can further be factored as we need sum of minus 4 and product of 3, so that means minus 3 and minus 1. Correct. So that gives you the velocity function and now with this we can answer a few questions especially the one which says when is the particle at rest. So the particle is rest when the velocity is equal to 0. So the two times are t equals to 1 and 3. So it is t equals to 1 and at t equals to 3. Correct? So we get it direct from this equation. When is particle moving in positive direction? So positive direction means uh, velocity is greater than zero, right? So we can analyze this velocity function and get the result. So let's analyze it. So let us say uh, this is the velocity function. <coughs> With zeros at uh, one and three, so it's like a parabola. So if I draw a parabola, it will be kind of like this. So that represents the velocity, right? From this equation we are only interested in intervals where it is positive or negative so I'm not getting into details I know these two zeros should be 1 and 3 right so this is when particle is at rest now the question is when is particle moving in positive direction so velocity is positive from 0 to <coughs> we'll start with 0 because t is greater than or equal to 0 right from 0 to 3 so we can say uh, it is moving in positive direction from 0 to 1, that is one thing, right? And then I should say 0 to 1 and then after 3. Since we don't really have a upper limit, so we'll say uh, when greater than 3. Is it okay? So that is how we could answer it. Uh, units is seconds here, so we'll write seconds here. Okay. Now, so time is in seconds, correct? The next is, when is speed of the particle increasing? Now, speed of the particle increasing, how do we answer this? Uh, as you know, speed is actually absolute value of velocity. Speed is absolute value of velocity. So from this function, I could sketch speed. So it could be kind of like this. Do you see that? That becomes the graph of speed. And somewhere in between, <clears throat> we know it's like it's kind of like this do you see that so it is increasing from here to that place and thereafter so from the graph you could actually figure out when the speed is increasing since this is a parabola we know this point here is at 2 so actually I could answer this question from velocity graph also and uh, here speed is decreasing right it is positive although but decreasing it increases from 1 to 2 
and then after 3. So it increases from, from 1 to 2 and then also it increases from 3 to, let's put infinity in this case. We'll also see how to check this from alternate method. We'll do that. <coughs> Next question is, what is the distance traveled in uh, for 6 seconds? Okay, so distance traveled in first 6 seconds. Uh, what we can figure out from here is that velocity becoming negative means the object returns, correct? So object returns. So let me sketch uh, the path along a straight line. So what we will do here is we can start object moving to the right. So here when t equals to 0, the position vector s of 0 is equal to what? It is minus 3, right? It is minus 3. Now at t equals to 1, we can place the value here and find the value of position vector. So at t equals to 1, s is equal to how much? So if I substitute 1 here, so we'll use calculator, okay? So when I substitute 1 here, I get, uh, uh, okay, so I'll just substitute the values in the calculator. So it is 2 times 1. Let me write that in brackets, 2 times 1 minus 12 times, it was 1 cube actually, let's do 1 cube. Okay, let's say 1 cube minus 12 times uh, 1 square plus 18 times 1. I know this was kind of redundant to do anyway. It will help me to calculate next value. So it is 5. Okay, so at 1 it is 5. Now at this time what happens is that the object returns. So at this time the object returns <coughs> and it moves in this direction uh, that means this negative direction till t equals to 3. So, so what we can do now is find at t equals to 3 what is s equals to, that is s of 3. So now I'll use my previous calculation and replace 1 with 3. So I hope now you understand why I substituted for 1. <coughs> so we'll make that 1, 3 now and recalculate. What do we get? We get minus 3. So it seems that it comes back to the original position, right? <clears throat> so at 3, it comes back to its original position. And then, so let's go back to the original position when we have this idea. <clears throat> and then it further turns and moves away. We are interested in distance traveled uh, in 6 seconds. So at this time, let's put t equals to 6 and find s. So we'll now calculate what is x of 6. So let's calculate that, replacing the value 3 by 6 this time. So when you have to do repeated calculations, it is worthwhile to use this method. You can always change the value, recalculate. In the end, it takes lesser time, 105. So we get 105 here, right? So, so what we get here is that the object moves total distance off, so we can now write distance traveled in 6 seconds as sum of all this. So first it went uh, from minus 3 to 5, so we say 5 minus minus 3, right? So this is first leg, distance of 8 units, and then back from uh, 5 to minus 3. So distances are absolute values. So you have to just add them up, right? So, and then uh, from minus 3 to, to minus 5, and you have to take absolute value of this, and then from minus 3 to 105. So then from, we can say, 105 minus of minus 3. Do you see that? <clears throat> so that gives you uh, 8 plus 8. Absolute value is always positive, And this is 108. Okay, so it's 108. So 8 times 3 is 24. So we get 124, and the units will be, I hope, meters. Okay, so <clears throat> so let me be very clear. We're talking about uh, uh, 
S in meters and T in seconds in this calculation. So with that, we can find the distance traveled in first six seconds. So we have answered all except the last one here, which is graph the position velocity and acceleration function. And we also intend to answer this question, when is speed of the particle increasing in an alternate way, right? So let's move on to the next page. And then from there, we'll discuss both these things in details. Now, let us try to sketch the graph of the position vector, uh, velocity, and uh, acceleration. So, in this part, what we will do here now is we'll graph uh, position vector, velocity, and, and acceleration. So, let's find the derivative once again. So, velocity is first derivative of position we get 6t square minus 24t plus 18 and if we factor we get 12t <coughs> I mean uh, if we factor we'll take uh, 6 column sorry uh, let me do it here so let's factor this so we get 6 common as we did earlier we get t square minus 4t plus 3 which gives us 6 times uh, t minus 3 times 1 minus 3t times minus 1, correct? Now, that is the velocity. The acceleration will be derivative of velocity, which is 12t minus 24. And if you factor 12, you get t minus 2, correct? We did this analysis before, and what we found that... Uh, <clears throat> There are two critical numbers. The critical numbers for us are at uh, 1 and 3. And since it is a parabola, it could be drawn like this. So this is a faster way of testing where you have maximum and where you have minimum. Correct? So let's say uh, if you test it out at these points, since it is positive, we have velocity. We are, we are testing velocity and negative in this interval and then positive here, correct? Since this part is negative, it shows coming down. And that clearly indicates that on the function s, so on s of t, it indicates here a maximum and in this case a minimum, correct? So we know that we have a maximum at uh, s of these points are 1 and 3 for us. So let's calculate these values. So what is S of 1? So if I substitute 1 here, uh, what do we get? We get minus 3, right? So, I mean, okay. So we get 2 times 1 minus 12 times 1 plus 18 times 1 minus 3, uh, which was 5 when we calculated in the first half, correct? And at S of 3, we did this calculation correct and at s of 3 i'm just reading the value from there it was uh, minus 3 so when you substitute 3 here that is 2 of 3 cube minus this was like cube and this was square uh, minus 12 3 square plus 18 times 3 minus 3 you got this to be equal to minus 3. So this was minus 3 for you, right? So we calculated all these values, uh, which are right there, correct? I hope you remember. Okay, so I'm taking those values from there. Uh, so we have maximum and minimum. We know the points at 1 it is 5 and at 3 it is minus 3. Now let's analyze the acceleration. For acceleration, at t equals to 0, acceleration is 0. So that means, that means if you analyze this part, at t equals to 0, we have a 0. If I take a value, let's say 1, which is on the left side, and 3 on the right side, placing 1 will give me negative, right? If I write 1 here, I get negative. And if I write 3 here, I get a positive result. Negative means concave down. 
and positive means concave up and this is for the function s of t correct so we get that from the velocity we have maximum and minimum points and we have a point of inflection and the concavity from the acceleration now these are very critical points to uh, sketch the graph of Display, displacement or position even without doing much with it right one important thing which we definitely want to know is what is the displacement at t equals to zero so if i write s equals to zero zero will give me minus three and here the point of inflection is at two so also let's calculate what is the value at two itself so we'll do two times two cube minus twelve times two square plus 18 times 2 minus 3 so let's calculate this value using the calculator so we have uh, 2 times 2 cube minus 12 times 2 square plus 18 times I read plus I'm sorry uh, let's change this uh, times 2 minus 3 is equal to how much it gives me a value of 1 so okay so point of inflection is at one so let's now sketch the graph of the function right so in the graph of this function uh, we will first sketch the velocity as we know how the velocity function it is like a parabola so for velocity let's find few more points one what is the velocity at zero so if i substitute zero here I get 18 correct and let me sketch what is the velocity at 6 I'll sketch up to 6 okay so if I substitute velocity at 6 I get uh, let's use the calculator again uh, 6 times 6 square minus 24 times 6 plus 18 well that's a very high value anyway okay so let's calculate this value which is 6 times 6 square minus 24 times 6 uh, plus 18 and that gives us 90 okay so this value is 90 for us as far as the acceleration is concerned let's calculate acceleration at 0 0 it is minus 24 and uh, and we know that at uh, at 2 it is 0 and let's uh, calculate for acceleration at 6 so if I write 6 here we get uh, 12 times 4 which is 48 correct 6 minus 2 is 4 12 times 4 is 48 so as far as the velocity graph is concerned we could sketch a parabola uh, and also this minimum point is required so we should also find velocity at 2 so, okay so let's find velocity at 2 also I'll write this value here these values are good for accurate results correct so if I write 2 here uh, let me use this equation 6 times 2 minus 1 times uh, 2 minus 3 which is equal to 6 times 1 times uh, minus 1 which is minus 6 so at 2 velocity is minus 6 so what we get here is at 0 it is uh, velocity at 0 is 18 and so let's say this is 18 for velocity and we'll just go kind of like this and kind of very high value at 6 right so that is our velocity graph so let me write velocity here so for velocity we calculated this to be 18 and we'll write this in meters per second this is at 2 this is 1 and this is 3 and this value here at 2 we calculate as 6 here we have time is it okay uh, and somewhere let's say somewhere here we have a point let's put a break here and then say after that break 6 comes and at 6 we have velocity which is a 90 okay now let's uh, sketch acceleration we'll use different things uh, acceleration is going from minus 24 through 0.2 so we'll just draw a line here kind of like this okay so, so think that this is what we have starting from here and uh, this point here on the curve is for acceleration uh, 0 is minus 24 right minus 24 anyway this is your acceleration 
And what you got for displacement is that displacement is minus 3 to start with. So we say displacement is minus 3. Somewhere they will put displacement. Well, these units are different. When we talk about velocity as meters per second, and now we are talking about displacement, which is in meters, okay? So this is, uh, I should write minus 3 meters, is it okay? So on a scale, we are using all, uh, but don't get confused, they are different units. Uh, this minus 6 is in meters per second, and 24 is in meters per second squared, okay? So think that they are different, however, we are putting them together so that you could see some results based on time. Okay, this is important. We are only interested in plus or minus values. That's the whole idea. Right. So at 1, we do have a maximum, right? So at 1, we have a maximum. The value of maximum is given to us at 1. S of 1 is 5. So <laughs> this point is, let's say, 5 for us. So wherever the maximum is, we'll put that as 5. At 3, we have a minimum and the minimum value is minus 3, uh, which is kind of same here, right? So, so at 3, we have a minimum, which is kind of like this. And at 2, we have some point of inflection, which is at, at 1. So let me sketch the graph first, and then I'll substitute some values uh, so that uh, it makes some sense for you. Okay, so, so we have a graph here, which kind of goes like this, turns back, and the point of inflection is at 1. So at 1, it will come up to 1, right? Think this is 1. And then we have a minimum somewhere there. So it turns from here, it becomes concave up. Do you see that? Concave up and then kind of goes up. So that is your displacement graph. So I'm sorry for messing it up a bit, but I hope you get the concept. So this point on displacement time graph will be at... Uh, S of 1, we get value of 5. This, this is 1 and 5. This is for displacement. And here the minimum value will be at 3, which is 3 and minus 3. Correct? So these are the two values which we have got. I wanted to answer one particular question, and that is uh, look into speeding. Now, speeding is a case where product of acceleration and velocity is greater than 0. So that means both have same sign. That means both have same sign. Both have same sign. Okay. So both are negative or both are positive. That is when it is. So either it is like plus plus, then you get greater than zero or minus minus, then you get greater than zero. So if you compare orange and green lines, what do you notice? Well, in the first portion, let me show you those two lines very clearly. In the first portion, they are opposite sign. But however, in this portion, from 1 to 2, both are negative, right? So both are negative. And you will also notice that beyond 3, both are positive, right? So, so we get our result as speeding is in the interval from uh, t equals to 1 to 2, and then from t equals to uh, 3 onwards, greater than 3. Is it okay? So greater than 3. So that is speeding. The other portions are slowing down. So from velocity acceleration diagram also, we could get the result of speeding. But in any case, I hope you understand and appreciate how we could analyze first derivative and second derivative to sketch the graph of the function itself, which is position function for us. Also remember, on the vertical scale, we have taken displacement, which is in the units of meters. We have taken velocity, which is in the units of meters per second. We have talked about acceleration, which is meters per second squared. So don't compare these numbers as such. They are with different units. However, the horizontal line represents time, which is in seconds, and which is common for all. That is why we could compare positive and negative portions of each type of graph and conclude our results. I hope that is to be, that is appreciated. Feel free to post your comments, share my videos, and if you like, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.